Hell yeah! Good morning, good lunch. A couple months ago, I made a video telling the story of how and why I got kicked out of my apartment by my former roommates. And at the end of that video, I said I would make a follow-up video. This is it. <laughs> no, but honestly, I didn't think I was gonna make a follow-up one because I felt so much closure right after. I felt like my name had been cleared. People stopped harassing me, people apologized to me, and on top of it all, I just accepted that people change. So why am I making this video today? Of course, Sears' girlfriend Dasha has been talking about the drama ever since January nonstop. But the one thing that really, really sent the message to me that said, Edwin, Go ahead, make this freaking video. Was when Seer did a Twitch stream a few weeks ago, spreading lies and just basically talking shit about me. I finally got around watching it last week and I thought, okay, let's, let's just reply to everything all at once. The whole mess. Now there's been a lot of allegations against me and Mina. However, Mina's in England right now and I filmed most of this video this past week. Except for a couple parts that we filmed right after I uploaded the past video because I was really set on doing the follow-up like as soon as possible. That's why you're gonna see the hair go from bleach to blue. As you can see, I'm in a totally different tone this time around. I'm totally over. I see these people just complete strangers. These are not the people that I was friends with. People that you're friends with don't treat you like complete garbage like they treated me. So I, I finally accepted that and I'm like, all right, they want to talk about me, I'll talk right back. And you know, Sir himself said on Snapchat, don't dish it if you can't take it. After he told a 13 year old girl to go fall down a well head first and remain in a vegetative state for the rest of her life, damn. <laughs> Don't make fun of Sears' girlfriend or he will roast you on Snapchat. This video is going to be mostly response based, so I'm going to be providing screenshots and little videos and any sort of resource that I can credit will go down in the description below. We're going to be talking about everything today. Everything. At least I hope so because I don't want to make a trilogy. Once again, I'm dividing every single topic as a chapter so you can remember where you left off in case you don't watch it all in one sitting because damn, this is another long video. Unless you are ready to watch it in one sitting and you got your popcorn in one hand and your drink in the other, then if that's the case, we're going to start off with me and Mina's response to Sears and Dasha's Periscope. So get comfortable and enjoy the movie. <laughs> I can't believe I'm making a fucking sequel. Hell yeah. Good morning. Good lunch. I'm going to spill some tea, boy. I'm going to spill some tea, and it's not gonna be nice. But since I'm also a fair person, I'm only gonna say so much, as much as it um, requires. Our ex-roommate has made a video today that has been very upsetting to me, and I'd like to start uh, at the very beginning. Okay, so at the very beginning of my video, apparently it was very upsetting to her. I, I, I don't know which part. Let's see what happened at the very beginning of the video. We were packing our stuff. Yes. That was very upsetting to her. Vincent flew Mina out. Wait, Vincent flew Mina? That didn't happen in my video. Wait, she just said that my video was upsetting to her and she was gonna start from the beginning. My video had nothing to do with Vincent flying her out. What the? Oh. Let's say it started. It started in January. I don't know what she means by it started in January because I guess she's talking about. She's not talking about my video. She's talking about the whole ordeal she's with you. Talking about me talking with Vincent, and I don't get how that relates to. Because you said started talking to see her in January, right? Yeah. That's kind of weird that she knows that, but sure, let's go with it. Her and I had some real beef over Twitter. All that there was really was squabbling. That's what I'd call it. In my opinion. I looked up to her. I really looked up to her. I will never ever deny that. That I started liking her more than she liked me. When me and her were speaking, I was never disliking her ever. I was wary and cautious of all the things that I've heard and seen. I never disliked her at all. She sent you a text showing you how she cut her hair and dyed it just like yours. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's what I mean. But the, the thing is, she's trying to say that that she probably thinks she liked me more. Like, okay, maybe. Of course I love Mina. Of course I love Mina with all my heart. And I've loved you even before I met you in a very, very, very friendship way. You know, like I care for you, I still do. Vincent and Mina made up and he thought the best gift he could give her is a ticket to LA. It was never his gift. It was always her gift. She was always messaging me prior to me and Vincent having that FaceTime call saying, come to LA when you're coming to LA. And then she convinced him to get me a ticket. It was never what she just said. You know that Edwin moved in with, uh, with Vincent thinking he was gonna get a job. He was living off of savings here. He didn't have a job. He was just thinking he could afford it. I'm not, I'm not being mean right now. I'm saying how things are. <laughs> Hold on, this woman literally just said that I went to LA thinking I was gonna get a job, thinking I could afford it, as if I left 
because I couldn't. I left because I was kicked out. I don't even know why she wants to bring this shit up. I had like a job offer that it didn't come through. So what? And for Dasha to tell me that I didn't even have a job, Bitch sleeps all day. She doesn't have any job at all. Her modeling gigs aren't real. I'm sorry, but Instagram gigs are not real. That's not real fucking money. <laughs> I can't believe this woman, dude. She's trying to she's trying to like poor shame me when she is literally the laziest person I've ever met in my life. She's actually coming to LA. We're so much alike. We're gonna do so many things. I was so excited. Nina slept in our bed. Not sexually, okay? When I arrived, I arrived thinking like I didn't know where I was gonna sleep but I expected to have like my own bed you know mm -hmm. but I'm sleeping in a bed with like two people oh yeah that's already a so like the first day right from the first day it's like oh okay like at the beginning I didn't think about a relationship of course not no but then the fact that it was like you know you can sleep in the bed and I said yeah at first because like like okay like I don't even know what else to say she's saying is it okay sleeping on the bed here with us and I'm like uh, okay I mean it's not like they had another option they didn't they didn't know they didn't buy an air mattress or anything and everything went fine but for some reason she didn't seem happy and I assume like a 20 year old person can speak out on what when when she's unhappy or not I didn't seem happy because of what was going on like behind my back and you keeping it a secret and acting like everything's fine and when you even brought it up you acted like I was thinking something horrendous, or something like that was like something you didn't do when you actually did it. What I wanted to say was so like obscene to say, hey, did you delete my Instagram, delete my Instagram pictures, delete my pictures on Twitter? And when I, when I did bring it up, but not in the sense of being like, hey, is this you? I said, oh, my Instagram's been deleted. My tweets have also been deleted. She's like, oh, maybe you've been hacked. Maybe you did it yourself accidentally and it's like what 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 do you want me to do be like hey did you delete it right now the version that i'm telling is not even as details as detailed as I want to tell it. This woman is so impulsive. She's the opposite of Seer. She loves the drama. She's the type of person that goes, I don't like drama, but everybody get dramatic with me. And he's like, no, I don't want to give anything about my personal life. I don't, I don't like this. And, and it's, it's really sad. It's sad. Oh, I'm going to share all the fucked up details online. Why? With what fucking right? Um, freedom of speech. My life. I can talk about my life. You don't- you have zero right to do this! With what right are you doing this? When I took her to the roof and asked her if she's happy, she told me she was polyamorous. That never even <laughs> happened. She would take me to the rooftop at certain points and ask me if I still liked Vincent. She'd ask me the same exact thing every night. Do I still like Vincent? It's okay if you do. Every time I said no, I do not have feelings for him. I said it, like, no, loads of times. So, I don't know what this is. I don't remember saying I'm polyamorous. I remember eventually saying it, but not just like straight up, like, are you okay? I'm polyamorous. We started having, trying to have a, a romantic relationship with Mina. There was no pressure ever. At least we didn't try and make it. And I told her, yeah, why, why not try? Why don't we like try this out? I have never done it before. So you suggested the polyamorous no, relationship. No, she's saying, why not try it? So who's? I'm just, she's yeah, just yeah, saying no. that I said I'm polyamorous. So I eventually did say that, but not in the same way she did it. So who suggested the polyamorous she relationship? She did. It sounds like she's saying that you suggested it. No, she was the one who told me that that was more, that was all that she's ever wanted put that in quotes like that's all that she's ever wanted i'm talking about my ex-roommate and and a girl we flew out here without any expe expectations so she says that she flew me out of any without any expectations but what i don't understand is why she then sent me a text saying that i suddenly owe what was it three hundred dollars for the return ticket it wasn't a lot of, it was i think it was like six hundred dollars it's not a lot of money you know it's the thought that counts and it's still hey we want you here we want to show you around we want to do shit with you okay i shouldn't even be sitting here and explaining myself because this is private things the the and the, the, the it has blown my my mind is fucking blown mina explained the situation at the end of the video like i never if you have would have asked me that two months ago what you we're the reason you are here honestly i had no idea what was gonna happen really i just i would never have expected this if you asked me two months ago if i would be in this situation i wouldn't know i wouldn't i wouldn't have guessed that this would have happened i'm not, I'm not gonna hold it against you but how dare you talk to us like that 
How dare you talk to us like that? We did so much for you. We did so much for you. You you made you made promises, I guess, but you never really elaborated on them. I don't know, you never there was nothing you didn't do so much. I'm sorry. Like, yes, you you invited me out, which I never asked for. That's what I'm saying. I never asked for this. I never asked to be flown out. I never asked for the drama to happen. They flew if you out. If you guys were already, like you said, you guys were already fighting beforehand, why invite me over when you guys were having like a shitty time? Why invite me over when you told me that you were already planning to kick Edwin out? Why why invite me around this time, that, that time period if you knew that this was going to happen eventually anyway? Ooh, that doesn't what? feel good. <laughs> they were planning to kick me out back then? I don't get how that's offensive. You know, and, and, and she's saying I don't that. Get it. I really want to be like, how is that? How is me saying? How is me saying what I said in that video offensive at all? So what? They let you stay at the apartment yeah. and they bought you a six hundred dollar ticket, which she said is not even a big deal to her. It's not even yeah. a lot of money. So why? So is what is she offensive? complaining about? Exactly. Yeah, what is she complaining? We're not villains. All we ever did was trying to help you, Mina. That's all we did. What, you first you wanted to fly me out because you wanted to hang out and like say sorry for what happened and now you wanted to fly me out because you wanted to help me? I came downstairs, I had the conversation, I had like a 30 minute thing where I was like, listen, everybody has to go. This is not what it was initially supposed to be. I hadn't told Edwin that my brother and I's agreement originally was that nobody can live with me. I told my brother that I was willing to respect any sort of rules or like regulations that he wanted to put on. The only reason that I could lease this place is because my credit is horrible because I had been broke for the majority of my life. And so my brother co-signed the apartment. He says that the only reason why we could rent the apartment was because of his brother, and that's not true. Like I said in the other video, I could have easily called my mom if that was the case, that like that it was only him supposed to be on the lease. I could have easily called my mom and be like, hey, no problem, we could both be on the lease, mom could uh, be the co-signer. I wanted to give Edwin an opportunity. He was kind enough to pay the security deposit. I paid the first two months in rent, assuming I was helping him. I never held it against him once. You remember when you would call me, you'd ask me, hey, how are you splitting the rent? Yes, and you never had an answer because you always said, Seer doesn't want to talk about it. Seer is just says, don't worry about it. You kind of are holding it against me right now by telling the whole world, but you did not pay two months of rent. I paid the first month of rent and you paid the security deposit, which who cares that you paid that because you get it back because you're still at the apartment. But the reason why you paid for that month of rent was because you didn't want to talk about how we would divide the rent between the two of us because you had the bigger room with the bathroom and you never want to talk about it. You literally put it off and my mom was like, have you talked to him about the rent? I'm like, no, he says it's okay. And you literally would not want to talk to me. You would not confront me. You would not say, hey, how are we going to split this? Like, I did not care. I paid all those other months for rent afterwards. So wh why would I care to pay for that, that, that sec uh, second month? Why, why would I care to pay whatever we decided on? I didn't. You just never wanted to talk about it, dude. You waited until Dasha moved in to decide, okay, this is how we're gonna split it three ways. I honestly think that part of it was that you felt guilty that you had her over every single day, so it wouldn't have been fair to just do it like a certain split because she was literally like a third roommate before she was even a roommate. That's, that's just what I think, but it's really weird that you're throwing me under the bus here, even though you're saying that you're never gonna hold it over my head, except this is what you're literally doing, dude. I wanted to give Edwin an opportunity to create here. I have, what I dreamed of was having a place where we could create together. You keep making yourself sound like some sort of hero in, in the movie, dude. You want to give me an opportunity to create here? Excuse me. This was a shared vision that we both had. L like you dreamed of having a place where we could create together. That was both of our dreams. We both had that vision, dude. So why are you making it seem like you only moved there for me? That, what? Edwin had posted his videos that we filmed together. We had filmed videos after this pro after this whole kickout thing. We filmed videos together. Sue and I did not make any videos after he kicked me out. Never. We did not make any. I uploaded one after that was filmed before he kicked me out. Okay, here's the thing. I was in Washington. I was hanging out with Skyda's Minecraft and stuff like that. And another thing, yes, you went to Washington and I wish you were there instead because you, sh you would have seen how crazy your girlfriend was on us. I feel so used. I feel so fucking used. I did this to try and make it all work. I'm glad that the vlogging camera worked on his behalf though. He can have it if he wants. But, but you're talking about me taking your camera like I'm a thief. Why are you not mentioning how you so freely used my, my heater, my heat dish? I never brought it up ever. I don't give a fuck, that's why. You, you guys keep bringing up this whole like vlogging camera thing, but I, I don't care that you guys use my shit. You probably have used my blender, I don't know, maybe, but you definitely used my heat dish, which is probably worth the same amount as your camera. And you let someone sleep on my bed two days later, and the person that lives there now is sleeping on my bed? And the only reason why it bugs me is because you're being so fucking petty, dude, and this is not like you. You were never this fucking petty about a fucking vlogging camera that you haven't even used in a year. It's just so weird that you can use all my shit, my bed, my heat dish, and then I fucking use your vlogging camera in the fucking 
world's coming to an end. And then suddenly, just because it's convenient for you, you disappear. I don't want to give you that privilege to get to kick me out twice. So yes, it is convenient to, for me to leave and not have to endure that pain twice. And you have put us all under the impression that you were concerned about Lena's well-being, when in reality, you were just interested in being in a relationship with her. He's saying that I'm only interested in a relationship with you, that, that I wasn't interested in your well-being, that I, that I fucking stole you, oh. that you don't have a say, that you never no. thought for yourself. Um, no, he didn't steal me. I, I chose to come along with him. It's not like I'm just like some like doll that's not saying anything and just go like, going along because he's telling me to. The thing is that Mina is a visitor to the United States of America. If she was to explain that she doesn't feel comfortable, then they could easily just kick her out. So I offered her, hey, you can come with me or you can stay there. Yeah. But yeah, no, go, go ahead and keep, keep believing your little conspiracy, dude. And I feel like you took an easy road out. Oh yeah, it was so easy. It was so easy for, for me to accept that LA wasn't gonna work for me, dude. After all the time and, and everything I invested in, in living there, yeah, it was really easy. Oh my God. Oh my God, he's really saying all this. I, by the way, like I said, I've, I haven't seen this before. You know, and I'm not angry at me or anything. I am just disappointed that you do not have the fucking balls to come at me and tell me, Dasha, I do not feel good here. I want to leave. No, you have to fucking leave me a note. You never ever even said it to me, so do you not have the balls either then? It's like... It's just so simple. Like, if you're gonna say something, at least do it yourself as well. All I care about is that you, like, never- that I didn't get an apology. What does she want an apology for, though? Exactly, that's what I don't understand. What, what am I apologizing for? Feeling uncomfortable, feeling sabotaged, feeling- feeling pressured to do things that- that, that felt so forced? She's shaming you for fucking leaving a toxic environment, and you should apologize for that. That's what I that. did! I- like, if we're gonna talk about that, like, there were arguments all the time. I still left the desk, chair here, and a couple things. I left the chair and the desk because it wouldn't fit in my Mini Cooper, and I was hoping to make another trip to get my shit back. I, I didn't just assume that it was a, a dump. Dasha makes me extraordinarily happy. She's supportive. Yes, we fight sometimes and it gets a little nasty. Edwin wanted me to be a version of myself that I used to be. Oh my god, I, I can't tell you the amount of times that Seer told me that he felt like he needed to change for Dasha, that he needed to like, he felt like he couldn't express himself emotionally because she would put him down for it. But yeah, no, keep, keep putting it all on me. I, I'm the worst person in the world, Seer, sure. I'm sorry that you couldn't coexist with Dasha and I. I know you guys clashed a lot. And then he says how I couldn't coexist with Dasha, but me and Dasha never fought. It wasn't until the end where she fucking threatened to ruin my life. That's when we couldn't coexist anymore, dude. January. And she lived with us since, like, August. As far as things, things go with my relationship with Mina, I don't regret flying you out here. We wanted to give you an opportunity. What is with this whole I want to give Edwin an opportunity and then and all of a sudden he wants to give me an opportunity? opportunity? What's up with that? What is this, make a wish foundation? All of a sudden we all had a wish to be in LA and he's bringing us all that. I never asked you for this opportunity. I thought it was a, a mutual thing that we both wanted to move in together. I guess you never communicated that you were only doing it as a favor? About a day after the Periscope, I got a message from someone from Austria that knew her from Austria and she said that her and a couple other people were keeping an eye over Dasha's fucked up activities and I was like, what the fuck? What? But I knew that getting me kicked out was not the first fucked up thing Dasha had done in her life. And honestly, I thought it was a little fishy at first, but she did prove to me that she knew Dasha because she told me a lot of personal stuff about Dasha that you would only know if you knew Dasha. She told me quite a few stories about her past, but I can't prove any of it, so I'm not even gonna bother sharing. However, she did share with me Dasha's Ask FM, which was still around. Basically, a Q&A page that ran from 2015 to like early 2016. This revealed a lot more juicy details about Dasha. And do you guys remember the funny person that would post dysmorphic pictures of Mina on the Pretty Ugly Little Liars forum? The one we talked about in the last video? Another really big reason why I was just sure that that funny person was Dasha was because in that forum someone posted really old pictures of Dasha and then the funny person said, where did you get those? And then the person replied, I found them on her Ask FM. And next thing you know, the Ask FM is gone. I was keeping a close eye on that forum and I noticed that the forum was literally gone the same day that the person shared the response. I guess that's why Dasha Dasha never bothered defending herself against posting those dysmorphic pictures of Mina on that forum, huh? Talking shit about Mina while offering her my room under a name called Fani. You literally can't- you can't make this shit up. Meanwhile doing this, Dasha was reaching out to Mina's best friend Neve and asking her to relay the message that, hey, you can still come back and have Edwin's room. It's okay. I'm not mad at you. She also insisted on her Curious Cat questions that she was not mad at Mina, etc, etc. Of course, she deleted two Curious Cats since the one she has up now. Basically, her message at this time was that she wasn't mad at Mina. She was only mad at me for taking her away. <clears throat> you know, ever since I broke Dasha's trust by telling Mina that Dasha deleted her Instagram, Dasha had it in for me. And when Mina and I got to Arizona, the hate campaign against me was so intense. I had never received this much hate online 
ever. And, and on top of being kicked out and my best friend not even wanting to find out why I left, like he ignored me instead of wanting to resolve it, it was really hard for me to deal with hate. I was being insulted left and right. I was called a thief because of the vlogging camera. I was called a moocher because Sears said he paid for two months of rent, which again was not fucking true. And on top of that, they had like two or three of their YouTube friends like fucking coming down on me and sending hate publicly on their, on their public timeline. And Dasha would actually say that I'm just playing a fucking victim, that I'm not even sad, it's all a game to me. And I'm like, excuse me, what? So I eventually made like a fucking, uh, like a Snapchat crying. I'm, I'm constantly on edge and I've never been so anxious. No, I, I'm constantly suppressing so much hurt. I'm not proud of it, but it happened. And another thing that happened was a YouTuber called Onision. He made a video about the situation and I was scared to click it, not gonna lie, because I've made a lot of like offensive tweets towards Onision. However, when I clicked it, it was super analytical. And I don't know, I, I found myself kind of feeling relieved that somebody like in social media didn't want to tear me down. Now at the end of the Onision video, he had people tweet Seer, and of course, I don't agree with that. Now up until this point, Seer was completely silent other than retweeting the Periscope and talking inside the Periscope. And of course, he had to see what was going on because his YouTube friends and Dasha were all ganging up on me. But he himself had not said one word up until he saw the Onision video. And that's when he finally made some sarcastic tweets about being manipulated. And you can try to justify not being manipulated all you want. You can, you can continue being blinded, but this is the most manipulative exchange I've ever seen in my life. I don't care how extreme the fight was. What kind of girlfriend says this to their boyfriend? I never even wanted this in the first place. I never liked you and cared for you in the beginning. I literally thought it was just fun to fuck you and leave. Maybe you should have stayed with the one girl that actually cared for you. Holy shit. But yeah, no, I'm sure it's a totally normal couples fight. In fact, if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, leave me a comment. What do you think about this? Is, have you gotten in fights like this? Is this really normal for you? Because this is what they said is normal for them and not manipulative whatsoever. Anyways, the day after my crying Snapchat and the day of Onision uploading his video, Sear sends me a long ass block of text in the middle of the night and he told me that Dasha had showed him the snapshot of me crying But I thought that was weird because I blocked Dasha on January 11th the day I was kicked out and I never unblocked her So that was either a lie or Dasha has a secondary account where she watches my snapchats Neither one is a good thing though <laughs> One of the first things he said to me in the block of text was All I know is I'm being bombarded by endless 15 year olds who know nothing about me Applying Onision's logic onto my relationship And we both know that if we were friends you'd equally think that's fucked up And like I said I do think it's very immature for Onision to have his fans tweet Seer But this is what makes me wonder if Onision's video actually has any contribution to Seer finally texting me Because right before he mentioned being bombarded by 15 year olds he talked about me getting harassed In the walls of text Seer was saying that he was very upset at my video in which I say he kicked me out. He said the video is gonna be there forever and the Periscope isn't. Now when they did the Periscope, because it was dramatic, thousands of people actually saw the live stream. And it was later re-uploaded to a drama channel where it garnered way more views than my vlog. So that point is kind of void. And I mean, come on, sir, you've been on the internet long enough to know that once you upload something to the internet, there's a very high possibility that it will stay there forever, especially if it's drama related. Like, I don't understand if that was supposed to be some sort of justification for Dasha's actions, saying that she wished she hadn't shared all those details and just wished that Mina responded to her text. Next? Huh? I didn't send the hate on you, understand that? And please know that I did tell them to stop. But they didn't stop. You had three of your YouTube friends all bashing me publicly. Your views are spiking because of this drama and I know you know that. But please know that what was said on the Periscope will blow over significantly faster than a YouTube video. Which will potentially ruin a reputation or life. Wait, the video where I said you kicked me out was gonna ruin whose life? You or Dasha's? Because Dasha's the one that said she was gonna ruin my life. I'm the one that got fucking kicked out. I said to him, Sir, you retweeted the Periscope shortly after. Like, quit acting like it was all Dasha. You literally were in the periscope and you also said a bunch of personal shit. You're just as guilty. I'm not gonna entertain any further texting. I told you I will talk to you about anything you wish over the phone. As he was sending walls of text, I kept saying, let's just let's just talk on the phone, let's just FaceTime, whatever. Because I believe that the issue was more complex than something that can be just fixed over texting. And then he blamed me for bringing attention to me getting kicked out to the public eye. No dude, your girlfriend did it first. He says the video stays, you're gonna continue to profit and benefit off of that. And you need to admit that. I admit it. And yes, I vlog my life and you've never had a problem with it until you kick me out, so... Don't act like you don't enjoy the views and the attention. The hate wouldn't exist if you never made a vague video allowing the viewer to assume I kicked you out overnight over nothing. That is a lie and it is unfair. Don't act like you don't enjoy the views. This is another hint at him thinking I'm enjoying the fact that I was kicked out. I didn't give that many details because I hoped to talk it out with you before I went into it. My problem is you really led me on to believe that everything is okay and I really believed it. I was also hurt, dude, I was. Okay, but imagine getting kicked out once and then learning that your best friend is planning to kick you out a second time. 
that's where I said I will clear that up in the next vlog because I noticed that was a reoccurring issue that seemed to bother you and Dasha. And so I did. He says, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't understand. It's so unfair. If you would have talked to me before you disappeared, I would have told you everything, but you did not give me that opportunity. You never gave me the chance. You just made things look nice and disappeared. I said, if you would have talked to me when I texted you, instead of having your girlfriend text me, the vlog could have gone significantly different. But what's done is done. Again, we will talk when we talk. I'm talking about before you left. You did not give me a chance. You literally assumed the worst and left. That is what is fucked up. Instead of just liking me tweets and then disappearing, if you texted me, then I would have texted you back. Well, that's actually a lie. As you can see, on Tuesday, January 17th, Dasha was acting really angry at me and Mina, so I asked you, is Dasha okay? Did I receive a reply? Nope, never. And you ignored it and took her word saying that everything was fine. No, everything was not fine. She was acting psycho on us. So of course, we were trying to like act as accommodating as possible towards her because we didn't want her to freak out. You know, one of the days she threw a glass at the sink and it broke out of nowhere. We were just in the room and we heard it and we're like, what the hell? She was like, yeah, it was an accident. That's no accident. An accident is tripping over a box. Breaking glass at a sink? Not so much. But I really didn't want to keep texting. I just want to have a phone conversation. So I just said, again, I screwed up. So did you. We can choose to talk about it or you can stay mad and still choose not to talk to me. I do not wish to continue texting about this. I am happy to clear up anything when you are ready. And I had told him that I only wanted to FaceTime him, my friend only. I didn't want Dasha in at all. And the moment that she would show her face, I would end the call. For the most part, this went pretty well. There's only a couple silences where he would look up and I would hear whispering. And then at one point, she totally butted and started talking I hung up but other than that we discussed a lot of the stuff we talked about in the text and what I really wanted to understand was why he conspired to kick me out a second time Sear was in complete denial of this he acted like he didn't know any of it and I'm telling him dude if you don't know any of this then maybe you don't have enough communication with your girlfriend because literally I have so many texts so many messages that Mina got of Dasha offering her my room and then Sear tried to justify by saying that Dasha meant that if she ever came back to LA she would have a place to stay Mina was also in the room when I was having the call so when she heard that part she was like uh excuse Excuse me? Uh, Sir, how about that time where you, me, and Dasha went to the cafe and you both casually said that I could have Edwin's room when he moved out? And then he exploded. He said, that was a passing thought. No, and he yelled at her. I was like, holy shit. Okay, we need to calm down. But in the end, he didn't want to admit that he wanted me out of the apartment. So that's why I strongly believe that it was all Dasha's plan. Because maybe he didn't really want me out of the apartment, but he obviously valued Dasha's opinion a lot more than mine. And the last important thing we discussed was that I wanted to make a video about my side of the story because I didn't find it fair that a Periscope was up and skyrocketing in views with her point of view and people were shitting on me and believing all of Dasha's lies. Of course, he didn't want me to make a video at all. He was practically begging me not to, but I said, dude, I'm gonna do this and you can't stop me because it is not fair. He eventually just accepted I was gonna do it and the call just kind of ended awkwardly, to be honest. And you know, something else that wasn't made totally clear was that not only did Dasha delete Mina's Instagram once, she did it three times. Oh! According to Dasha's timeline, the day she did it, she told me. And that's a total lie because she told me on the 29th of December. She said she did it out of anger and she called it an impulsive action. However, if you look at Mina's Twitter, you can see that she first complained to Instagram because she thought that it was just a thing that Instagram did to her on December 17th. This of course being a day after Sears' birthday, a day in which we all got drunk except for Dasha. And this is all visible in the vlog. The best kind of tequila you can get. You can see me, Sears, and Mina all drinking and having fun being drunk except for Dasha. On December 18th, Mina makes another complaint on Twitter saying my second account got deleted by Instagram. Later on in the same day, Mina tweeted, I'm gonna try this one more time. Follow this account and please report at Mina X Bell on Instagram. So now it looks like Dasha not only deleted Mina X Bell on Instagram, but she also took the handle. So Mina could never be Mina X Bell again on Instagram. On December 23rd, Mina tweeted, can someone explain to me why my pictures on Instagram are deleting themselves every night? Now keep in mind, a lot of the nights Sia and Mina were drinking heavily, and this is why I wanted to stay away. I thought it was such an unproductive environment. I didn't feel creative. December 25th, again, two pics have been removed from my Instagram with no notification and these pictures showed no nudity or anything against the guidelines. Poor Mina had a shitty Christmas. At this point, Mina had looked into it really heavily and she found out that Instagram doesn't delete pictures without notifying you. Neither do they remove your account without notifying you. So when she found that out, she started getting paranoid that maybe Dasha was fucking with her and she changed her passcode. And this is the part where in the other video, Mina mentions that she changed her passcode because Dasha was like always looking over her shoulder and ask her why she was being so so secretive and saying, you don't think it was me, do you? So after Mina took all the precautions possible, she changed her password on Twitter, on Instagram, she changed her lock code, the pictures stopped deleting themselves and the Instagrams as well. On the 31st, however, Mina made a tweet against Dasha that she probably didn't even realize was against Dasha. She said, you little bitch ass, I see you trying to get into my Instagram account. I'm getting those, use this code to verify your account text. And this is something Dasha would do to fuck with all of us, me and Sierra as well. She explained to me that if you wanna scare someone that someone's trying to hack into their account, all you have to do is go to like the support page and type in their phone number 
number. And once you click like the forgot password button, it will send you a text saying, hey, verify your account. And you know, I've seen you tell people I should have kicked her out the moment I found out about the fake accounts. But when exactly did you find out? Because instead of kicking her out, you continuously fucked with her. And when were you planning on telling her? Be honest, because what you told me was that you would have never told her and you would have done it again in a second. So you have some deep rooted anger towards her. Sure, you did apologize to her over deleting her accounts, but that's only because she found out about it. Only because I told her. And because I told her, you told me you were going to ruin my life. And guess what I found out the next day? You got me kicked out. And for some reason, you still wanted Mina in the apartment. You offered her my room. For what? To continue fucking with her? Do you not see why she wanted to leave as much as I did? Sir emailed Mina asking her for rent money and also for half of the airfare that cost to bring her to America. Mina let him know that she could pay him in person because we were planning to go the following week. She also said, I noticed some of my things being worn. To make it easier, could you please put my clothing accessories into a bag to facilitate the process? Thanks, retired baby fox. To which he said, okay, okay. I was trying to coordinate a plan to go to LA as soon as possible because I had a friend that was offering to sublet her apartment. So I was like, shit, I could possibly move back to LA already because she was offering a pretty good deal. And of course I thought we would get the whole nightmare over with, you know? Have Mina pay Seer back what she owes him and have Seer pay back what he owes me because he owes me a lot of money as well as get the few things that I left in the apartment. So a day before I head to LA, I send him a text and I say, have you seen this? Because it's a YouTube podcast by one of his friends talking about Seer versus Edwin. And I'm like, dude, I thought you were gonna tell all your friends to stop talking about us. I got no reply. So I sent him a DM on Twitter asking him what the last text he received from me was. And obviously that wasn't the text I sent him. So I said, okay, I texted you something on Friday, but I guess you didn't get it. Can you make time to have a call? Radio silence. I want to have a call with him because I knew he was in Washington, but I want to ask him if he, if he cared that I went to the apartment and picked my shit up because I had already made the trip and I was like oh, I don't want to drive another six hours back here just to get my shit back. So I called and called and he didn't pick up and I'm like god damn it. So this is where I made my biggest mistake throughout the entire drama. Mina wanted to check out some shops downtown so I was like you know what why, why don't we why don't we try the key? It was all my idea. I'm the one that tried the key at the old apartment and they changed the locks and I was like oh wow. We were there for no longer than a minute and I was like well, that, that sucks. I'm not gonna deny that if the key worked, I would have picked my shit up and gone. Because frankly, I never wanna see Dasha face to face ever again. And at that moment, in a way, I felt like, whoa, maybe maybe this was meant to happen. Maybe they were meant to be gone so I don't have to interact with them. I had a mutual friend with us, so like, it's not like I had any intention of stealing or ruining anything. But that was my mistake, I apologize. Like I said, I didn't break in or stay there longer than a minute. And I felt stupid about it right after and I feel stupid about it now, but what can you do? I Like I, like I said, I apologize, but what's done is done, you know? That, that was my one very, strong mistake and I wish I could have apologized to him but he didn't give me the chance. So later on I upload a vlog and it shows me going to LA and coming back and less than one hour after I upload this, Dasha is ranting about how I try to break in and I'm a smuggler and she starts retweeting and posting memes about me as, as like a thief and all this shit. So I DM Seer and I'm like, is this how your girlfriend is going to act every time I upload a new video? I thought you both wanted to take the non-public route because that is something he strongly emphasized in the FaceTime that he didn't want anything else to be public. He wanted all the drama to be private and I agreed but she totally blasted me on Twitter instead of just confronting me and asking me what the fuck was up with that and I would have apologized he says you tried breaking into my home with zero communication after agreeing to get your stuff when I get back now like I said I texted him and DM him and called him and he ignored all of that convenient that you tried when I was gone assuming I would have no idea assuming I didn't change the locks which thank God I did this almost sounds like he thinks that I went to LA only because I knew he was in Washington I swear to anything that's holy anybody's grave that I didn't plan it just because you were gone I already had the plan before you left you're lucky that I didn't come back to an apartment with your shit gone. You can't wait for my convenience. So you're holding my stuff hostage? Awesome. You don't leave things at someone's place on purpose. Leave and then try to get in yourself when they're gone because it's convenient for you. I didn't leave them on purpose. I just couldn't fit them in my Mini Cooper. But of course, I'm not going to justify me testing my key out, okay? I know I fucked up. And that's when he blocked me on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and even Snapchat. And probably even MySpace. So I never really had the chance to apologize. That's, the, that's literally the one thing that I regret doing out of this entire drama. I'm not going to sit here and justify it. Now after the first video, a lot of fans that believed only Dasha came to me and, and they apologized. They said, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know your side and I, I was blinded. They told me they felt bad for Dasha because she was getting so much hate and I was like, where's the hate? And then they showed me this anonymous thread that was documenting all of our drama since the beginning basically. The anonymous thread is called Lolcow and they were going hard on each one of us. Me, Seer, Mina and Dasha. But of course, Dasha was getting the worst treatment which is why she was getting all upset saying she was getting hate. But mysteriously enough, she could never prove the hate so it made a lot of sense when I saw this thread. And the thing they all seem to agree on about me is that they called me really ugly and skinny, so it's fine. Someone said I could be better looking if I gained a little weight, so 
I'm holding on to that. Thank you, Anonymous. And something else that that Dasha fan shared with me was that Dasha also has a private account in which she only talks about me, Mina, and her new roommate. Of course, by the time she sees this video, I'm, I'm assuming that Twitter might be closed, but it's very real. Here's a post that is edited and posted by Dasha on her private account, of course. Kendall Jenner making Edwin shut up and stop victimizing himself with Pepsi after multiple attempts trying without it. Oh, so funny, so relevant, yes. I think it's pretty funny how Mina has the audacity to tell the world that I copied her look. Excuse, but what exactly is your look? Are you fully original, inspired by no one but yourself? If you watched the video, you'd notice that I said that people that I was friends with, that I was mutuals with online, were sending me these photos in comparison to my own. The thought eventually got to me, yeah, but it was never like I'm saying, in the video I never said you're, that she's copying me. I never said that. You cannot claim Urban Outfitters, American Apparel, berets, or cute things, or black curly hair as your style because it isn't. The only reason people think you and I copy each other is because we hung out and we're associated with each other because people found you through Seer. Most of the pictures that I showed in that video were before we even met. So for her to say that it's because we were associated with, with each other or hanging out is nonsense. Killstar reached out to me, for example, sends me a lingerie set you happen to have. She copies me. So let's see, does that mean that when I do a campaign for Lime Crime and they gift you with a couple of highlighters and lipsticks that you copy me? I feel like you're really reaching and like telling everyone that I'm trying to say that, you, that you're copying me from all these images and like, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that people said it to me, okay? Furthermore, your style was completely different. So for me, just highlighting these things isn't me trying to be rude to you it's just me saying the story from the beginning me noticing how weird everything is most of the clothes you got in la you bought because i brought them to you saying hey that would look good on you okay so yes of course i i have never been to la for more than like what like a few weeks so obviously when you hang out with somebody in a country you're very unknown to you're, you're going shopping with that person they've lived there for what two years you're, obviously they're gonna know around, obviously I'm gonna hang out with that person mostly. If I'm trying something on and she says, yeah, that looks good, like obviously I'm gonna be like, oh, thanks. That compared to what I showed and what people were telling me about, like no, that's not a comparison you can use. Do you see me telling people you copy me because you're wearing contacts and baby gray from the store I showed you? The wigs from the store I showed you? She's trying to say the, the, the eye contacts we bought together, the wigs we bought together. Her fight against what I said is her saying, we bought stuff together, like, Obviously, we're gonna buy stuff together if we're together. What's weird isn't that. So if you go around telling people what and what not I stole from you, please also give credit to the clothes and wigs you and pictures you have because of me. The fact that she's highlighting that specific topic when there's like a hundred other things in that video because it's an hour long video is crazy. Tell people about how it was my idea for us to make a YouTube channel together. Tell them. I spoke to her about making a YouTube channel, but it was never like a thing together. She's never even before she has spun ah. Uh. Well, she's just basically just saying that like I wanted to be with you since the beginning. It was we should have been together, I guess. Or what is that? Because like, because you just hit me with that full sort of jumble right now. Huh, I know it's a, it's weird. I mean, everybody everybody wants to make a YouTube channel yeah. at one point. I feel like <laughs> yeah, she, especially in 2017. I actually had the idea of it before her. Not the idea of making a channel together, but the, the idea of having a separate channel without anyone on it, like my own ideas. But why does she want people to know that she, you guys, that she wanted both of you to be in a channel together? That's I don't understand why she is using that because it doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, she was the one who decided like, hey, let's make a channel together. Okay, she also wants you to tell people that it was her idea to get pink plastic flowers to take pictures with, so. Oh, okay, well, you know what? That's actually funny because it was my idea. I actually told her that we should get flowers and stick it on the wall. Okay, honestly, that, that's such a random thing. Who cares? It, it like, what? Why did, why? She also wants you to tell people about the several times that she saw a cute outfit or maybe even a white coat that you now happen to have. So when we go out, if you guys have ever been out with your friends and you guys see stuff, like, it's completely different to what I was talking about in the video. <laughs> this is all so funny. It's not like that. Like, any sane person if they watch the video, you can tell that this and then that is like 
How is this any comparison at all? Technically, I told you to get those white flowers at Hobby Lobby. You were gonna get the cream one. So are you gonna tell people that I told you to get the white ones? Oh not the shit, guys. It's not my idea. I'm outed. Anyway, you aren't original. Thousands of girls have the similar style to you and I. I change my style so, so fucking often and there isn't anything wrong with that. I get my inspiration from many, many girls on Instagram. Not just a single one. So do you. So if you want to be petty about style, we can be petty. Pictures will follow. Oh shit, she has pictures by the way. This is her saying, hey, this wig would look good on you. Do you want to wear it? The choker she got me. The choker she got me. She got me as a gift. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you want me to not wear it? Aren't all these pictures from when you were in LA? Yes, these so... pictures are from when I was in LA. That she gifted me in LA in the same apartment as her, in the same bedroom, toilet, bathroom, whatever you want to call it. The same fucking room. I was in the same room. I w you said like, hey, do you want to wear this? She says here, my coat and my beret. Again, like I just said, I was with her. She said, hey, this would look good on you. Would you like to wear this? So I said, yeah, because she offered. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, but she's doing it doesn't make sense. She's just like and trying to destroy your character for a while. What, what's she gaining out of this? And she says here, again, my coat and my top forever 21 shorts. So this specific picture, it's a shoot that we did together. So she was taking pictures of me. She was like, yeah, this would look good together. This is what I don't understand. This was like when we were getting along, like, and I was with her. I don't get why she's using this as like an argument to what I said in the video, because this is when we were together, hanging out, just doing general stuff. Like if you hanged out with your friend, you'd borrow each other's clothes. It's not the same as not knowing someone, not having met someone and then having your friends or people online send you pictures of someone and saying, hey, why is this person looking the exact same as you? And they're your ex's new girlfriend. It's different, it's completely different. All right, now let's talk about Dasha's favorite thing to say. Fake accounts. Good morning, Dasha. Fake accounts. Dasha, it's time to eat. Fake accounts. Dasha, you need to stop with that. Fake accounts. <laughs> So Dasha posted several videos to her social media that she tries to pass on as proof that Mina is behind at least 15 Instagram accounts that are fake. She says that one of the nights where everybody got drunk except for her because she never drank when everybody else did, she went to the bathroom and she saw that Mina's phone had been left there, unlocked. I didn't go to anybody's phone. If you're stupid enough to leave your phone on the fucking sink, unlocked, with an app open, that's your fucking fault, not mine. Like, what the fucking hell? So of course she took a look at it and she was like, oh my gosh, I recognize these fake accounts. And she took a picture of the phone and she goes on to say that a lot of these accounts have hated on her and Sierra extensively. But it's whatever, it's more the hate that she gave me with them that bothers me. And this is the reason that she uses for deleting Mina's Instagram. And I should have probably done worse, but it didn't. Now something she fails to do is show proof of the hate that she received from these fake accounts. Like if the hate is so bad that it made you want to delete someone's social media, you would think that you would screenshot that or take a picture of that. I mean, you're taking a picture of someone phone want to take a picture of the hate you're receiving and the thing is that she said that she was receiving hate while Mina was still in LA so why can't we get a screenshot that's the first thing that smells fishy the second thing that smells fishy is the screen cap for this fake account called Anna Lily which this account is conveniently deleted now and she blames it on Mina of course I think the Anna Lily account is deleted because I told people about it and she obviously deleted it. Around the time that Mina was receiving loads of hate, she was also receiving some weird pages on Instagram that would like show these edits that look a lot like the Anna Lily edits. And these edits, of course, were mocking Mina. This is the only screen cap I have because I found it on locale, but as you can see, Baby Dash is commenting on it. So she's enabling and encouraging the behavior that she was so against. Or did she make the image herself? Like I said, something fishy. Expose number two, this page still exists on Instagram. It's called CRX Dasha Love. As you can see, this has a bunch of edits and they're all like fangirling over Sierra and, and Dasha, but also Onision. There's like a little fan fiction there about Onision and Dasha hooking up and she's over there like, yes, kidnap, you're so funny. I don't get it, but again, the edit looks a lot like the Anna Lily edit. And that was fishy number three. I do have a fourth fish and that is that Mina has no real photo editing skills. No offense, Mina. But if you take a look through Mina's like Twitter media, you can see that she's never posted a picture with so much like 
editing and so much things on top of each other like these edits. Dasha on the other hand, ever since I met her she's always been very good and very passionate about editing like images. If you take a look at her Ask FM from two years ago you can see that she says that she worked as a media designer on one of her Q&A's. And in the second question she happily talks about why she enjoys studying graphic design. Can it get any fishier than that? I think so. Dasha goes on to say that it's definitely Mina's phone because it's got the cracked screen, the same bunny case, and that if you don't believe her you can go back to my vlogs so and you can see it there. And it's true. However, what she fails to mention is that she has two phones and that not only did she get Mina a bunny case but she got herself a bunny case so they were matching. And the last thing she forgot to mention is that her phone was also cracked. This is getting way too fishy now. Now last but certainly not least, all those points that I just listed out, those are my analytical points. Now I'm gonna share something that Mina told me. She said Dasha knew of this app where she could get followers on Instagram fast. And you know, ever since I met Dasha, I always wondered how it was possible for her to get over 100,000 followers on Instagram in less than 10 months. She had absolutely no social media presence before Seer. And at this point, she has almost as many followers as Seer. As you can see, every month she was gaining over 10,000 followers on Instagram. Now that's either amazing or there's some Something fishy going on. Dasha said that in order to get followers through the app, you had to make fake accounts yourself and then follow a bunch of people. So I guess it sounds like an endless chain of people just making accounts to follow random people and eventually you get a bunch of followers. I don't know. To me, that's the most fishiest point I could bring to you, but of course, that's the most biased. And in the end, you can believe what you want to believe. But just because someone keeps shouting, fake accounts, fake accounts, fake accounts, just because they're trying to drill it in your head, it doesn't mean the fake accounts are meanest. They probably belong to someone who's actually fake. Seer dedicated an entire Twitch stream to me. Thank you. In this Twitch stream, he retells the story. Oh, as if we haven't heard enough, but he has a new revised version. And I had asked him to leave, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna give you a month and a half. You know, I'll give you a month and a half. I just was like, I can't live with you. He says he gave me a month and a half to leave because he just couldn't live with me. That's different. What he actually said and what he repeated in the live stream with Dasha was that his brother told him to kick everybody out. But okay, I guess all of a sudden it changed. And then he says that I disappeared out of the blue. Out of the blue, he disappeared and was like, and then like a, a couple days later drops this, drops the fucking, uh, Seer kicked, uh, my roommate kicked me out. He then goes on to say that I dropped a video where he, I said that he kicked us out two days later. No, more like two weeks later because I was trying to like text you and everything and clear everything out. But when you ignored me, I was like, as of now, I don't want to reveal too many details except that they kicked me out of the apartment and that's where I'm going to leave that for now. That's all I'll say, that's all I'll say. And then, so it's funny because later on I found out from a very close mutual friend that he was planning on leaving anyways. You found out from a close mutual friend that I was leaving? That's weird. Tell me more about this mutual friend and, and when when was I leaving? I'm not sure what this person told you, but the day after you kicked me out, of course I was thinking, what are my options? Obviously I have to find a new place. And then later on the same day, you said, well, maybe we can work this out. So yeah, I was considering on leaving. I never planned to leave before you kicked me out though. Don't get that twisted. He's always hated my relationship with Dasha because I finally ended up with somebody who makes me happy. So now he's saying that I hate his relationship with Dasha because she makes him happy. What? <laughs> this is his reply to all the emotionally abusive stuff that went on. But he posted screenshots about of me venting to him about when Dasha and I got into a fight. You know what happens when you get in a fight with your significant other? What do you do? You talk to your friend about it. You vent to them. You say, God, dude, she's being such a fucking bitch right now. She's saying this fucked up shit. Because when you're in a fight, you say fucked up shit to each other. It's what happens when you really care about each other and then suddenly things aren't working out. You say shit to get to each other because that's just what you do. Apparently it's completely normal. If he's happy, that's that's cool. Congratulations, man. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Edwin was like, this is fucked up. You guys are, this is, this polyamorous relationships don't work out. I want Mina gone, want Mina gone, whatever. Sir talks about the polyamorous relationship with Mina and Dasha and then he says that I was saying that it was fucked up and that I wanted Mina out, which, what? When? I was saying that it was fucked up how much they were fighting, how much miscommunication there was. But I never said I wanted Mina out. I simply asked about when she was leaving because originally he said two weeks and all of a sudden she's still there. I was like, what? I, I mean, I'm the roommate. I, I, I think it's a respectful thing. I never wanted Mina out. It's interesting how he also spends about five minutes talking trash and ranting about Mina, like when they dated back in the day, yet you let her stay at your place. You bought her a plane ticket. You were dating an 18 year old girl and you cheated on her and you stopped, you blanked her, you ghosted her, so she got upset. Ooh, oh my God. 
and then you flew her over and you expected everything to be cool. Drama, 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 drama. Dude, there's no fucking drama. I've not said a single fucking thing. Stop making, turning me into a villain when I'm not. Every time you make a video of this, Twenty to thirty to fifty thousand people are are thousand people are seeing it, and it's perpetuating the drama. It's keeping it alive. Dude, I made one video, and then at the end of the second video, I wanted to clarify because you were so upset about how it made, I made it seem that you kicked me to the curb. So I clarified that at the end of the second video. And there's another video called "How the Drama Has Affected Us" because your girlfriend has not shut up about about us or the entire situation. It's so interesting how you're glossing over that like it never happened. Your girlfriend has not nonstop been talking about about us to this day. So that's what that third vlog was about. And I told you that I was gonna make a video sharing our side of the story because you and Dasha did it at one hour live stream. So I was like, I have to tell my story now because you fucking pushed me to the corner. She's a bad girl with Mina. She did a bad thing with Mina. Her first time with Mina. We're just friends that kiss with Mina. My roommate kicked me out of our apartment with Mina. Clarifying some things with Mina. I was getting emotional with Mina. She's using me with Mina. A message to my best friend with Mina. How the drama is affecting us, Mina. I, I don't understand what you're, what you're ranting about. Look at his thumbnails, he's doing them all with Mina. Yeah, because Mina's in all my videos. It's interesting because when Mina was living here, Edwin was totally against it. He's like, this is weird, this is too many people, it's no, it doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm out of my creative zone. Yes, and I don't go back on my word. I was out of my creative zone throughout Mina's almost entire stay, probably like 90%. And it's perpetuating the drama, it's keeping it alive. You know how much, you know what I said about it? I, I was in one, I, I did one fucking uh, periscope about it. Again, completely glossing over your girlfriend's actions. I'm the only one keeping it alive? Maybe you completely turn a blind eye to your girlfriend's three curious cats having hundreds Literally hundreds of questions answered talking shit about me and Mina. Hundreds, dude. And tons of tweets about us. Instagram, all the Snapchats, all the shit that she's posted. So, I mean, if you want to talk about being annoyed at people perpetuating the drama, maybe you should watch that video called How the Drama's Affecting Us, which I changed the title now because apparently it bothers you so much, and see what we're talking about. We're talking about Dasha nonstop talking shit. <laughs> this person is literally retweeting hate against us. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's how much time she spends on us. I'm not bulletproof, and, and I've been telling people that I'm not bulletproof. Th things affect me, and... It's like she's saying so much that, that's not true. Obviously, you don't pay attention, though, so there's no point. You probably already clicked out. Listen, just because somebody makes an hour and a half long video doesn't necessarily make it true. People can believe what they want, but Dasha, your girlfriend, said... I respect people that hear both sides and don't just blindly believe shit. And I was just giving my side because she had already given one hour of her live stream of her side. And here you are giving another hour plus long live stream. It's not my fault that you guys just do live streams. I, I prefer to do more collected, calm, and edited videos. Edwin was already planning to move out. Very, a very trustworthy source. He was like, yeah, uh, months before you even kicked him out, he was planning on moving out. And I'm like, oh, well, now that's convenient. So just because I, I kicked him out, it's now convenient for you to be a victim when you were planning to leave. Edwin was not planning to move out. What the hell? Why would I invest so much of my life into LA and living with you and enjoying my life with you and all of a sudden I'm planning to move out. Please tell me about this mutual friend whether you're talking about. I'm confused. I was not planning to move out of LA. Were you just waiting for me to kick you out so you could make a video about it? Yes, I was just waiting for you to kick me out so I could make a video about it because that makes so much sense. I feel like Seer thinks that I'm living like a happy-go-lucky rainbow life. Everything's fucking fantastic, but it's not. Things have been shitty. I, I've been living at my mom's house. You, you think I like this? I'm finally gonna get a new place and I'm fucking ecstatic, but it took me fucking almost five months to get to 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 recuperate. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's no point in trying to explain this to Seer because apparently he just thinks that I'm the happiest person alive now that you kicked me out and I got to make a video about that. I don't understand that. It's fucking weird. Just look at the titles and the thumbnails and tell me that is not over sensationalizing something that really isn't that big of a deal. And then he says I'm over sensationalizing something that is not really a big deal. My best friend not kicked me out. Look, I, I get it. I get it. To you, our friendship didn't mean much, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm I'm glad that I'm seeing this now. I don't care as much anymore. I have had time to get over it, but it hurt me. And if you're gonna criticize my thumbnails and titles, please, I invite you to look at the entire YouTube website. In fact, how about your own YouTube channel? I don't get it. When a YouTuber talks about other YouTubers' thumbnails and titles, I'm like, what? Look at yourself, buddy. I had a right to ask you to leave. It's, it's my, it's my space. I like how you haven't brought up the whole brother story though. You're just like, I had the right to ask you to leave. Yeah, but you could have at least told the truth. Also in the hour and a half long video, there's a friend who's filmed in it who talked to me afterwards and was like, this is what Edwin would do. He would go to a friend's place, 
film him talking about the situation and film Mina crying while he's telling the story to someone else. At this point, I'm honestly really confused. I feel like Sears, did he watch the 90 minute video? So I went to a friend's place and I filmed myself talking about the situation and I filmed Mina crying. Or I honestly don't understand what he's talking about. If you watch the 90 minute video, I'm pretty sure Mina and I are the only people in the video. I'm a very close friend of Dasha's actually and was like, yeah, Edwin just kept trying to be, have me be in his video and I didn't want to be in his video. And then you say that I talked to a friend of Dasha's to try to get her in our video. Dude, the whole video was supposed to be just me and Mina telling our side of the story. That's the whole point. We never try to get anybody else in our video. And I guess this is important to talk about. A lot of our mutual friends warned me that Edwin was trying to use me. I should have fucking listened. And now he's saying that people warned him that I was gonna use him and he should have listened to him. Do you feel like I use you, dude? At what point? I would really like that explained further because at what point did you use me when I helped you with your thousand dollar deals, you know? Friends help each other. I helped you make videos, you helped me make videos. I don't get it. Well, because I'm, I have less subscribers, I'm using the bigger guy. Is that, is that your ideology? And suddenly, just because Edwin is a YouTuber, he has to take everything that is our personal life and throw it on the internet. I'm a vlogger. I've always been a vlogger since the beginning. Look at my videos throughout since I started. And yes, I've been vlogging my life. And I've always asked people if they want to be in my videos. You've always consented to them. You've always been fine with it. I don't understand why this is such a shocking revelation to you all of a sudden. Just because you don't like me anymore, you're like, oh, Edwin vlogs his life. He thinks that's okay. Yeah, I do. And then like, not only that dude, but he just, he's what, he starts, contacting Onision and does a you now broadcast with Onision. If you watch the broadcast I did with Onision on you now, the first thing I say is, have I ever talked to you before this broadcast? He says, no. I only went on that you now to ask him that so he can answer that. And then Onision kept talking and it got a little awkward. But you can, you can watch that yourself. You, you can be the judge and see who the real bad guy is, whatever. If I'm the worst for associating with Onision and for the, those few minutes, then so, so be it, crucify me. You're the one that associated with him for so many years. You let him pay for your trips to Seattle just so you can make videos with him. Like, dude, he spent four months just making everything about it because there was nothing else to talk about. It was the only thing going for him, if we're being honest. like Honestly, when you talk about these four months making everything about the drama, it, it almost sounds like you're describing your girlfriend, dude. I mean, take a look at her Twitter. Have you not done that? If you look at his Snapchats before, writing a big video about the details leading up to when I was kicked out. Hour and a half long video. <laughs> it's just so fucking, I don't know. I, I don't make that kind of content, dude. I'm here to make fucking art and whatever. But you don't realize that you you push me to a, a, a shitty depression and sure you can make fun of it like like I, I'm worthless and oh yeah, I'm probably just saying I was depressed and I've been depressed just for YouTube views. Yeah, you can say that, sure. But I've been trying to rebuild my life, okay? and. and I don't know, I feel like explaining to you, just like talking to a wall. And what, Mina accuses Dasha of stealing her style. Dasha is the one who took Mina shopping for her style. Oof, it's like he didn't watch the video at all. The part where Mina addresses how Dasha was dressing like her it was before Mina even arrived. How is that relevant to them shopping together? Oh, oh no, you are the only person in this world that wears a beret. You know what I mean? Get the fuck over it. And you're telling Mina to get over it, yet Dash is the one that made like a four part note or whatever on her Twitter right after my video came out. Like that's the thing she really wanted to address. Like how dare they talk about it for less than a minute. I don't want to talk about it. Who knows? Maybe Edwin will make another an hour, hour and a half long video. Dude, I'll make a million more videos about whatever you want to talk about me. When somebody talks about me, it's called a video response. I mean, it's not just what the people in the commentary community do. You know, that commentary community that you've been trying so hard to get into. I'm just fucking over it. Like, and Edwin shouldn't be talking in the first place because his last real relationship, he sued his ex-girlfriend. You, you're not in a position to give me relationship advice or life advice. So this part's fun. He talks about my previous relationship in which I almost sued my ex-girlfriend. I didn't actually sue her. And guess what? Her and I are actually good terms. I could get her on the phone right now. I bet you can't say the same for your ex-girlfriends because you cheated on every single one. I mean, come on. Fuck, I don't know. How oh, many more? Why does he do this to so many girls? Her and I were actually on really good terms and she just disappeared and stopped talking completely. We asked her if she wanted her stuff back. She didn't have, there was no response. Um, no response? Fam, check your email. Like I said, just because somebody makes an hour and a half long video, 
of a narrative and a perspective doesn't mean it's fucking true. I couldn't agree more with you. Just because someone makes an hour long periscope, uh, tons, hundreds of tweets and Q and A's about me and Mina and another hour plus long live stream doesn't mean it's fucking true. I didn't fucking do anything wrong. I have not done anything wrong. I flew her out because I wanted to make something work. Someone give this man a crown. You can't argue with the way that I feel. If I feel happier, it was a better decision that I made. I, I want, tried to help him out. I wanted to make things work. I paid the two, two first fucking months of rent. Holy shit, this guy still thinks he's a saint. He still thinks that he paid for two months of rent, which he didn't, and he still feels like he didn't do anything wrong. I just feel like I did not do anything wrong. Angel. They most certainly are not Disney characters. I'm tired of this be positive, be positive bullshit that they only pulled after they got kicked out because they want to make it seem it's easier to victimize yourself when you look like you're promoting positivity all the time. This is real shit and this is what's really going on. I have no interest in censoring my content and censoring what I am all about, which is just being real and being me. And if I'm going through some real shit, like some hard shit, I'm not gonna put some false positivity onto YouTube, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Actually, if anything, my vlogs, I feel like they got more raw and more real. Like, I feel like I've, I've given more serious message. I don't know what he's basing this off of. I feel like he's just told what to say and he just repeats it or, or I don't know what, what are you going off of dude? I'm also expecting Edwin to make a fucking three hour long documentary about how evil of a person I am after this and I'm sure he'll get a lot of views for it because that is that has been the only success in his channel. As I'm filming this video, I don't know how long it'll be, but hey, if the only success of my channel is you highlighting how real of a person I am, then thank you, I guess. Is, is that what you want me to say? Do you want me to kiss your ass for uh, putting me through bullshit? Now, as much as I'd love to show you all the hate that Dasha sent Mina's way, I'm only gonna highlight the few that really stand out. Now, as you can see, I'm filming this on Wednesday, June 7th. And despite Sears saying that I'm the only one talking about the drama, here's Dasha talking about it 15 hours ago. As if she hasn't been talking about Mina since before she even met her. And we'll get back to that. Since she started insulting me recently, I thought I'd return the favor with a nice advice. Uh, what? Where? I looked through Mina's timeline, Instagram, and Snapchat. She hasn't said anything about you. This makes me think that you go through her Twitter and assume that any tweet that Mina makes that is un pleasant is about you, which shows a lot about your character, not Mina's. Dasha says Mina has 15 different people if you count her fake accounts in. See, I'm not that petty. I could make an account where I list the things she started doing after she met me. Wigs anyone? LOL. Now you deleted Mina's Instagram, so it's really hard for me to look through Mina's old pictures. However, I did look through her Twitter and I looked, 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 looked through her old pictures and I found this picture. Maybe it was a one-time thing, right? August 26th, Mina in a long black wig. August 30th, Mina also had a short blonde wig which she hairsprayed with pink. Now Dasha says that Mina didn't wear wigs until after they met. However, the first time I remember seeing Dasha in a wig was in September where she had a short brown wig. And this is the first picture she ever posted of herself online with a wig. September 13th. Quite technically, Mina was doing wigs before you. Maybe think twice before you want to throw some bullshit out there, Dasha. Because you remember who you're dealing with. The king of fucking receipts. The only thing that I can give you credit for is that you took Mina out to the Santee Alley which has a bunch of wig shops. And you both bought wigs together and that's okay because you were friends at the time. Getting mad at Mina over that is like me getting mad at you guys if you ever went to the taco place I showed you? Who cares? It's a public shop. You guys were friends. It's a public taco restaurant. We were all friends. And then she went on to make two videos on her Twitter where she basically just echoed everything that Mina had already addressed earlier in this video. Saying that she didn't copy Mina and Mina should stop saying that. But where where did Mina say that you copied her? <laughs> You're literally getting triggered by random ass people telling you that you dress like her. In her first video, Mina pointed out how Dasha still wears Mina's clothes and this is how Dasha responded. She said, it's funny that Mina expects me to respect her clothes when she partially took mine, owes us a thousand bucks, and lies about her account. I, I don't know how to say this, but Mina did not take any of your clothes. She doesn't owe you shit. And she didn't do the fake accounts. But just the beginning of the tweet is hilarious. She expects me to respect her clothes? No. <laughs> what the hell? They're not even your size. That's what's weird. And Dasha always made fun of Mina's appearance tons of times. And she even admits it. I make fun of your appearance because there is not character to be made fun of. You're a black hole that just absorbs, but still stays empty. Holy shit. She made fun of a time when Mina's wig cap was showing in a picture. She would make fun of her eyeliner. But the one that stood out the most to me was when she made fun of her her eyebrows. She said, girls with eyebrows that look like Minecraft swords. And this seemed to be some sort of inside joke because her biggest fans were totally mocking it and even putting on the, the fake edit makeup on themselves. And the reason why I find this funny is because not only did Dasha do this Minecraft sword eyebrow thing, but she also did her makeup exactly like her biggest fan mocking Mina. <laughs> I don't even have a metaphor for this one. <laughs> In Dasha's infamous video exposing Mina, she says, I do believe there is a difference between 
sharing private information about somebody publicly and a difference between um, sharing private information and sharing somebody's plan to use other people. It's not like I shared some private details about her life or childhood or whatever. Dasha not only publicly slanders Mina every chance she gets, but she has also sent private messages to Mina's friends and people that Mina follows. Loads of people have messaged Mina apologizing and confessing this to her, but they'd rather stay private because frankly, they, they said that they're afraid of Dasha. However, for some reason, she felt the need to open up to one of my fans and tell her everything from her point of view. Dasha said she wanted to fly Mina out because Mina apologized to her and she had told her how bad England was for her. She related, etc, etc. And she wanted to hook Mina up with some photographers and an agency, which she made sure that they thought negatively of Mina now. So she made sure that she went out of her way to make sure that people in the modeling industry think negatively of Mina. Holy shit, that is a big reason why I want to make this video because that is so fucked up. According to you, because Mina made fake accounts, you had to delete her Instagram three times, delete her Vine, and delete random tweets to which you never confessed. I'm the one that told her about the Instagrams. And then when she wanted to get away from you because she realized you're psychotic, you were like, you're not gonna be my friend? I'm gonna make sure everyone thinks negatively of you through fabrication and lies. Oh man, that pissed me off. <laughs> Here's another example of Dasha going out of her way to slander Mina. Somebody asked her on a Curious Cat, what did Mina originally want to do with her life? Like, okay, first of all, if this is a question about Mina, wh why are you answering it? Why are you going out of your way to talk about her? To which Dasha says, I don't know, she doesn't have a job or degree or anything. Not throwing shade, I really just don't know. Like I said, there are so many examples of Dasha projecting, and this is definitely one of them. Dasha has no job, and she's been studying rhetoric since over two years ago. Her Ask FM says she's studying rhetoric. And by the way, which university? I'm curious as to what university lets you study abroad and not actually go to university physically and you say your entire income is from modeling what agency pays you well enough to afford the apartment that we lived in <laughs> there's a lot of fishy things that people need to be asking Dasha and let's not forget the time someone asked you if Mina was British and you answered by revealing her full name saying you don't know where it's from seriously what the fuck Dasha you know Mina's British and you just played dumb so you could reveal her full name and even if Mina's name was Mariana Veronica or Teresa it wouldn't make her any less British a name doesn't define where you're from then one of Dasha's fans had a problem with Mina doing a taxidermy photo shoot she doesn't understand how a baby deer could die of natural causes a drought maybe uh, honestly you are free to call the taxidermy shop ask him yourself because the shop we did the photo shoot at does not kill animals they get animals that are about to go to waste and, and you can call them, but this is not what this is about it's about Dasha saying on the other hand I am not surprised that she did the photo shoot because whenever her and I would buy makeup together she didn't care about the history of the brand again another example of projection I present to you exhibit a Dasha works with a company called 0770 the beautiful it's baby dash hashtag leather so as you see she's promoting a black leather choker that's worth 89 pounds and you may say Edwin that was all the way in October 20 26, maybe she didn't know about veganism that much even though she claims she's been vegan for years Okay, yeah, that was just one example Dasha works with a watch company called Daniel Wellington And as you can see she's wearing a black leather watch which she says go use my code It's baby dash for a discount go buy this leather watch. Whoa, whoa, Edwin Edwin don't go so hard on her That's only two times plus that was back in December. I mean look just in May She posted about how happy she is that Germany has ended fur farming. Okay, you're right You're right. Why am I going so hard on her because the next Instagram post she has is literally Literally her promoting a leather camera bag. <gasps> But yeah, keep on preaching about how Mina's the one that doesn't check if a brand is vegan or not. When Mina was receiving a lot of hate in April, instead of replying, she simply said, I refuse to let negativity bring me down. Spread love and kindness, bitch. Four days later, Dasha's Instagram gets hacked. And she got it back, but before she got it back, she started a secondary Instagram account, like a personal account, she calls it. And her first caption started out like this. I refuse to let negativity bring me down. What? Four days later? Now, you could say it's a big coincidence, but there's way too many coincidences with Dasha. Why does it have to be coincidence after coincidence after coincidence? She definitely stopped talking Mina's Insta uh, Twitter. I, I mean, I strongly believe that. I could be in conspiracy mode believing in aliens and shit, but dude, word for word. And that's not where it ends, ladies and gentlemen. Her Instagram name is It's Baby Fox. She's literally calling herself what Sierra used to call Mina when they dated. What the fuck? Now, despite everything I've shown, do I believe that Dasha's gonna stop harassing Mina? Hell no. Dasha's had a hate boner for Mina ever since before they even met. Right now, it's I'm not copying her and fake accounts. And before that, it was only Edwin has to move out. You can overstay your visa and keep his room. And while Mina was in LA, it was let's do everything together. Let's start a YouTube channel together. Also, let me 
delete your Instagram three times and random tweets and your Vine. And before Mina even came, it was the weirdest thing. Dasha would always talk shit about Mina. Always nonstop, just openly talk shit about Mina to me and Sierra. One time she got these really high heels that look just like the ones Mina had back in June. And I was like, those are totally like Mina's, aren't they? She's like, no, how dare you compare me to Mina? They're different. And I was like, okay. And even Sierra agreed with me. And it was just nonstop. And she would always complain about Mina. And when we asked her about it, she would say, oh, I'm only trying to get close to her so I could destroy her. And I was like, what the fuck? She said this to me, to Seer, and to Sam, Seer's old roommate, because he also found it weird that she would like be so kind to her on Twitter, even though she would talk shit about her in real life. Now, of course, I don't have any solid proof of her talking shit about Mina, but it did confuse Seer because it was like the beginning of his relationship with Dasha. And he even brought it up to our friend Kate. And I told Mina about this back in February. I told her that Dasha wanted to destroy her before she even met her. She was like, what? And I wanted to show her somehow. So I texted Kate and I asked her, what would Dasha say about talking to Mina? Like, why did she do it? Do you recall? And Kate said, yeah, she said she was pretending to be her friend so she could destroy her. I said, thanks. I just wanted to type it so Mina could read it and know that it wasn't just once that she said it because she didn't just say it to me once and to Sam once. She said it very many times. No, I've known, which is why I hated Dasha ever since I met her. Seer told me the day I helped y'all move. I asked why he was okay with that and it's fucked up and he said they fight a lot so he just keeps quiet. I said to her, that parallels with so many conversations that I had with him. So many times I've wondered things and he's like, I don't ask or you can ask her, but it's like basic questions and like simple things most people should know about their girlfriend. Now, because a lot of people are afraid of Dasha, I wanted to ask Kate if she would be okay with me showing that text I just showed. She said, the only thing I'm concerned about is the part where I say I hate Dasha. I don't want her to never let me see her again or something weird because I dislike her. We both know she'll somehow turn him against me just because I don't like her insane ass. Plus, I still gotta get y'all's things. I told Kate it's not her responsibility, but she really wants to be the mediator and really wants to get my things from the apartment because they're still there, I hope. I said, I know, that's the thing I thought might be overboard, but she already doesn't let you see him. It's just not explicit. True, but she doesn't have anything to use against me. Eh, fuck it, you can use it. To which I was like, oh my god, the whole thing? I, I was just about to suggest that I could use your first reply. And she says, you can also include this text of how I'm afraid she'll manipulate Seer and make him despise me like how she did to you. <laughs> I love Kate so much. She's been such a huge support to me. A lot of my friends have kind of cowered, which I, I guess I don't blame them. You know, they don't they don't want to lose respect from Seer or they don't want to, they're afraid of, of Dasha. But Kate is a ride or die. She, she has been there for me through so much. She says, I adore Seer, so if she does that, it'll devastate me because he was my first friend and he and Steph took me in when I had no one. And he's always treated me like I meant something to him. You know, I used to have a lot of hope in here. I used to hope that he would acknowledge our eight years of friendship and know that I had never had any bad intentions, so why would I just suddenly start now? And I think that was a large reason why it, it was so hard on me the, that he would kick me out and, and completely want to dissociate with me at the snap of a finger. On his live stream, Sia repeatedly mocked me for several things. Milking the drama and dragging it along, having a 90 minute video, and taking so long to reply. Now, if you strongly believe that I was milking the drama intentionally, then that's a difference of opinion because that was not my intention. It was really affecting me, so that's why I mentioned it in a couple vlogs until I decided, you know, I just gotta make one video to hopefully get it all out the way. I just wanna share my story no matter how long the length of the video and get it out of the way because I told you that I was gonna do that from the beginning. Plus, if I really wanted to milk the drama, don't you think I could have made the other video and this video into like six videos each? I just wanna share my story and drop the mic. But you and Dasha had to continue running your mouths about me and Mina, so I had to pick the mic back up and hopefully this can be the last drop. I know, that was cheesy. Now the last thing, why it took me so long to reply, for me, it, it, it honestly affected me a lot. Like, it was really hard for me to talk about. Now, I can I can talk about it and not be affected. But if you look at, at my at my mood, my tone, and the other long video, I was still anxious telling the story, but you best damn believe that for the first three months, I, I was in, in a fucking slum. I was in a shithole, dude. When people come to me because they're feeling sad or really depressed, the first thing I say to them is, is to occupy themselves and keep themselves busy. Surround yourselves with a positive environment. Otherwise, you just stay stuck in your thoughts. And when you're down, your thoughts tend to be negative. So I want to take my own advice. You know, I didn't prioritize responding to all the drama because we were still getting harassed constantly, constantly. After the Periscope, everybody had such a negative image of us. Just constant harassment. Everything you can imagine, I was receiving so much and I just wanted to get away. I, I wanted to do as much as possible. And if you watch the vlogs, I was trying to keep my attitude as positive as possible. And just because I eventually get over it months later, all of a sudden I'm not, not allowed to talk about it. Talking about it the first time around helped me get closure. I'm very good at moving on. I don't want to talk. I don't want to see you because it is a reminder of my mistakes. Um, I know my mistakes, I'm trying to learn from them, and I just, I want to move on and make, um, 
make content. And that's cool that, that, you know, you can get over people like that. But I'm not like that. I valued you a lot. However, you've helped me recognize how someone could drastically change and I've learned to dissociate from you. It seems you and Dasha are convinced that Mina has some sort of agenda. Now, of course, I'm biased, but I feel like that agenda is actually Dasha projecting onto Mina because from the time that I've been with Mina, she's, she's been genuine and doesn't seem to have any bad intentions. Now, now, hey, I could get fucked over in like a few months or whatever, but <laughs> I don't know. I... I don't know, I, I don't believe it. Especially considering how intense I go in about exposing bullshit, I don't think Mina is fucking with me. And on top of that, you say this. Okay, I have a significantly larger audience than Edwin. If I was angry, I could make a dedicated video, blah, 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 whatever, get the commentary community involved and, and be destructive. And that's not the type of fucking person that I am. You know what I mean? And he knows that I'm not gonna do this. Now, of course you say that I know you're not that type of person, and of course you wouldn't set the entire commentary community upon me. But honestly, I don't know what kind of person you are anymore. That's just the truth. I don't know you anymore. You are a way bigger YouTuber, and there was that fear that you would try to take me down. But I thought to myself, with, with what ammunition? It's all based on lies, and lies fall apart. You can't build a castle on lies, dude. Something that C repeated in both his Periscope and his Twitch stream was that he didn't want to be a platform for drama. He wanted his content to be art. But the Periscope was drama. The Twitch stream, drama. The podcast you did talking shit about Onision, drama. The other podcast you did talking shit about Onision, also drama, and you hosted a show called Drama Alert. So let me correct you because I think what you meant to say was you didn't want your YouTube channel to be a platform for drama, but anywhere else, yes, let's talk about drama, right, Sir? Talk about drama on other people's platforms. Just wanted to correct you so everybody knows what you actually meant. Him and Dasha also mentioned that both me and Mina only have relevancy because of Sear. Well, first of all, it's a little ironic for Dasha to say because who was Dasha before Sear? And Mina, she had around 30,000 followers on Instagram before you deleted it, Dasha. Right now, she's at like 34,000. You're acting as if Sear made her blow up. Sear never shouted her out on Twitter or anything like that or on Instagram. He never shouted her out on anything. I don't know what you're referring to when you're saying that you, you gave Mina her name. If there's anyone that's gonna say they gave Mina her name, it's gonna be me, bitch. <laughs> and last but not least, I didn't have relevancy before Sear. I hate to break it to you, Sear, but to me, you were like a creative partner. I, I, I don't think I used you and I don't think you use me either even though I edited like a third of your worst of Sear video I don't care that's what friends do for each other they help each other and I paid for four months of your rent when we lived in North Hollywood you did pay me back eventually but you didn't pay me back in full but it's all right because friends are there for each other I never once asked you for a shout out I only asked you to be in my videos because I felt like we vibed off so well creatively and I could sit here and show you my YouTube analytics and how there's no significant growth before living with you and after but what's the point I mean do you really believe that I used you I really hope I covered everything in this video if I didn't then go ahead and ask me a question uh, if I find it relevant enough I'll give you a transparent answer and I'll even put it in the description so nobody else can ask it and if you haven't seen the original video of what happened before this timeline go ahead and watch it and Sir and Dasha please just just cut the shit out I don't want to have to make another fucking video this is a lot of work people giving me shit about monetizing the other video yo I'm gonna monetize this one too what the fuck this is a lot of work all right that's it